Welcome friends of AI for Autism. We continue with our series of interviews where we hear from members of our community and listen to their stories. And we have a wonderful guest with us today. April is a full-time mum from our birth in Scotland. And April is also the mother of three children, Jaden, Leighton and Colt, one who's diagnosed with autism and one with traits. And today we'll be hearing April's story and we'll get a chance to learn from her experiences. Now, please be warned, this interview will contain some sensitive content that some of your viewers might find disturbing. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to April Wedgborough. Hey, April, how's it going? Hiya. You're right there. And, and who's yeah. your companion there? Who's this? This is Princess. She's my oldest baby. Oh, beautiful. Princess Staffordshire Bull Terrier? Yeah. Gorgeous. They have beautiful smiles. Yes. April, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how old your children were when they were diagnosed with autism? So I'm, um, I was 25 in April. Um, my oldest is eight, that's Jaden. He originally got referred when he was two going on three and they had lost the paperwork. So it was nearly till he was five before we got referred. Um, and they said he has autistic traits he has trauma traits from my past relationship which um he, he was Jaden's biological father he was quite abusive towards both of us and um, so he thinks that he, he may have trauma from that um he's recently had blood tests taken because he does have global developmental delay as well um and sensory processing disorder he got blood test taken and he's got um, micro deletions, which just means he's got like missing chromosomes. And there's a lot that comes with that for it being like a tiny bit of his body. Um, but we're still under assessment for ADHD, possible autism. We're not sure, but the micro deletion does cause a lot of like autistic traits, um, eye problems, joint problems, behavioral issues, mental health issues. And, and Jaden will suffer with these for the rest of like his life. Um, but I don't see him as any different. That's who Jaden is. It was never there to begin with. So mm. it's not really missing. Mm. Um, Leighton, he's going to be six in a few weeks. He's my middle child. He does a few things like he'll cover his hair, do this with like, you know, really noisy, but they think he's maybe copying his brothers. Mm. So, there's that he's apart from that he's a he's the angel of the three oh. and then there's my youngest Colt who's going to be five in the first of July he got his diagnosis in August when he was three nearly two years ago um he's also got epilepsy global developmental delay and so sensory processing disorder as well um but we got his diagnosis for autism when he was three but that was quite you know quite hard um when I had him, I knew something was different. He, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. He wouldn't make eye contact as a baby. He was about three months old when I started raising issues. And everyone was like, no, you've just had a baby. You're being overcautious. It's your mental health. I, I just got a ping back on me. And then he was round one. He was a little bit later for his, um, his milestones. And then they realised that he's not making eye contact. He's not speaking. So we got referred and because um, we were already seeing the paediatrician for my oldest, we got him pretty quickly and um, it was she was pretty sure from the start it was autism. And then when he was three, we got the the diagnosis, which is it's been great having that. Thank you very much for sharing that. That was that was quite an introduction. In fact, you mentioned the microdilations, and I was going to ask you, how does that exhibit in your son? And you've mentioned the joint problems, the eye problems. Would you mind There's, elaborating a bit on that? Yeah. Of course. Um, I'm still only learning myself because we've only just met with a genetic doctor. Um, I myself don't have it, and neither does Leighton or Cole. Um, because we get we got checked. So with it, they could become heart problems, which Jaden has been monitored because I was born with a heart murmur. Mm. So he will continue probably to get monitored. Um, epilepsy is also one. Um, heart, um, I said heart problems, eye problems, which Jaden does have glasses. Um, behavioral issues, Jaden has a lot of behavioral issues. Mental health issues, we are with CAMS for his behavioral mental health as well. Um, 
he, he's quite bendy because at first I thought he was maybe hypermobile because he's he, he's gets really sore joints. He can't walk for far or stuff. But now it's tying into this micro deletion. So he will get sore joints and stuff. And that there's so much to it. It's, um, for it only being a tiny bit of him not being there, there is so much that comes with it. Um, trying to think what else, getting it off the top of my head. But um, there is a 50% chance if Jaden was to go on to have children that they would have it as well. Um, it is genetic, but it's not from my side. Mm -hmm. So. And thank you for sharing that. And there was something you touched on uh, pretty early as well about the abuse. Now, uh, feel free, if you feel comfortable to share more about that and your experience and also how it affected your son, uh, by all means, please do go ahead. That's fine. He was, um, it was just before he was one, um, my partner, my youngest two's dad, he's brought Jaden up since he was one. Jaden does believe that's his father. Um, Although they said Jaden probably won't remember, there are bits in the back of his head and he does like, um, he used to bang his head and Jaden often copied that. It was like a coping mechanism. So even though he might not quite remember, those traits are still there for Jaden. Um, and we're working on it. He's he's doing so much better. He's got, um, he's getting more support and at first, like he found it hard to make friends at, at school and he just struggled in general. But overall, he's having more good days and Jaden's got his own special chart in school and stuff. So there's a lot of support there from people know what he's been through. And he's he's just amazing. He's come on so far. Um, we still have our really bad days with him, but that's to expect. Um, but he has come far so far and he's doing so well. And I'm just glad that he doesn't have to remember it, all of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it sounds like it was a very challenging beginning for him. And no doubt it was also challenging for you too. I mean, how was that for you and also coming out of that environment and then knowing the changes that you had to make in your life too? Yeah, for your child and et cetera, et cetera. It was quite hard. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was getting out that was a tricky bit especially with the child involved it, it was it was quite hard to get in there and then obviously there's the family and it was just a hard time I had went into a special house and because of the domestic violence when I had got away and there was still like I had to change my number several times I um don't go on my original Facebook sort of things things like that had to go um it was, it was really hard, but I'm away from that now. And I think, although some days it's never going to truly be gone what happened, but I'm away from it now. And all I could do is look forward, you know, to the future with the kids and the yeah. kids are doing fab and just being there for them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well thank you for sharing that. And you know, I think this is the first time in any of our interviews where we've had one of our speakers share the experience, not only uh, being parents to autistic children, but also having experienced abuse and the children having experienced abuse. Uh, so thank you for being open to talk about that. Uh, going back to when you discovered that your children were autistic and what that meant, how did you feel, April, and how did you change as a person? Well, I didn't know much about autism. It's only sort of getting more and more now. Um, I knew something was wrong with my youngest, definitely. Um, with my oldest, I couldn't I didn't know about autism. I just knew that there was something wrong and I knew obviously what he had went through probably contributed to that. Yeah. Um, but with my youngest, I knew a bit about autism and I just knew like everything that that's coped through and through. And I was just um, getting the diagnosis was the real thing because the thing is like with my oldest at school, like when he went to school, you don't, they don't get help unless they've got the diagnosis. And I think it's ridiculous, even though there's so they've got to go through school struggling because there's not the label on them that's given. Where my youngest, um, he goes into school this year and thankfully he gets to go into the base. But, um, but the nursery was so good with him. Um, they've got one to one. He has one to one support in school um, in the playgroup. He was in playgroup when he was two. 
to three and they were sending him home all the time. Oh, we can't cope, he's crying. So I was constantly picking him up. I missed so much of college for it because I was constantly picking him up. And then he went into nursery and they are great with him, but lately it's back to the same stage, sending him home all the time. And I'm just hoping that like that's not going to carry on in school because they can't keep sending him home. He has one-to-one -one support, so they have what he needs. Um, even though I'm his mum, I, sh I can't keep, you know, when he's at school, that's, that's up to them to look after him sort of thing. And this kind of leads on to my, uh, well, my upcoming question, uh, how friends and family were after discuss. Oh, excuse me, now, uh, how friends and family as and also services were when it comes to service, whether it's in additional services or even the school, uh, after discovering that your children were autistic or at the moment one of the children is undiagnosed, isn't it? And what was support like from them? You've touched on it now when it comes to school, but how has it been from family and services? Um, family, it was um, it was okay. I think everyone knew Colt was different. Um, I don't don't think maybe everyone understands. Shelley, she understands as well. She knows she, with Leon and stuff, so that's been great. And um, my mum and that's always known that there was something different. So that's all been good. And I think everyone's just that's who they are. They're not. They don't. You know, I don't think everyone looks at them and be like, "Oh, you're the artistic child." I think they look and they just see them. That's who they are as a person. That's yeah. Um, so I think family and friends have been quite um, good with that. Um, services, <clears throat> most of them have been good. We got um, like parents, parents and stuff from the National Artistic Society and she is amazing. Um, the good thing with her herself, she has artistic children as well. So she's not just, you know, giving me stuff and she doesn't know. She's really good. Um, however, like the council and stuff, they're not, they keep labeling it a mental health issue. Um, but most services we have had involved um, to do with the kids' needs have been really good in understanding. Yeah. And that helps. Well, that's, re that's really good to hear. That's, and uh, for our viewers who might not know who Shelley is, Shelley is one of our previous interviewees who knows, uh, who knows April. And Shelley is also the wife of Matt, who was our first interviewee while we were hiking from... Uh, from Brighton to Aberdeen last year. So yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and you, you've touched on it ape, slightly April, and I wanted to ask you, what were some of the things that you and also your children faced as they were growing up, as they are growing up? Um, I think the, the main problem I have is when we were to go shopping, um, for instance, if one of them was to have a meltdown, so it comes, it can become very overwhelming. And I myself suffer from like really bad anxiety. So it's usually try get in the shop as quick as I can get out. So if I've got the kids, I think the hardest bit, if they have a meltdown, the stairs yeah. and being horrible comments about yeah. the kids, you know, acting like brats and spoiled children and stuff. When that's not the case, it's very overwhelming. The noise, the lights, all the different, you know, colors, the food, stuff like that, smells. <clears throat> I think it's very overwhelming. And when they can't cope, especially like Colt cannot, Colt's um, away to be five and he still is non-verbal. He can't say to me how he's feeling. Mm -hmm. He'll have a meltdown and that's how I know he's not coping. Um, my oldest, Jaden, he has ear defenders and things and he covers his ears and it's like, it's too noisy. And then he'll start maybe playing up because he knows at that point, like, we'll just go out and shop if we can. Um, I've had to leave shopping several times because the kids aren't coping um, with being shopping. But I think the worst bit is the stairs and the comments when they know nothing. Mm -hmm. I think that's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. People actually have vocally made statements and comments to you, just like that. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we've had stairs, and I've said to a few people, like, you're not helping and stuff and they're like children like that shouldn't be brought out the house and that and they just you know they, the the way they talk it's not like the kids are actually children they speak as if they're from another planet horrible um which i'm sure their children must be amazingly good all the time for them to judge me 
um, I think that's the worst part is when we're out on the stairs and it doesn't help the kids because the kids are going to feel everyone's looking at them and that's going to make the situation worse mm -hmm. because their anxiety levels are going up because they're like all eyes on me sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's not fair. No, it's not. Uh, it's interesting what you said about judgment. Not too long ago, we interviewed a lady, Natalie, and she was talking about judgment. And it was an interesting perspective about how she learns not to judge them. And then she encourages them not to judge her too. Uh, and judgment, uh, yes. And hopefully through understanding and through raising awareness and acceptance, and that's what we hope to do, we will, will be able to pinpoint these kind of things. And when they see a parent having a tough time in a public place and the child may be lying on the floor, maybe covering their ears, then they'll know, ah, this child might be autistic, the child might be going through a meltdown and have a bit more compassion and understanding. Yeah. We have had some nice people. Um, if their coat's still in a buggy, he has no danger of awareness. Um, but Jaden, if he goes to the ground, I'll get on the ground with him to reassure him. We have had a couple of people um, asking if I need help, um, if they could do anything, or trying to speak to Jaden just um, to help calm him down. To, and I think it's nice. Um, I know some parents don't appreciate people getting involved, but for me, it's quite a, a nice thing that people, instead of standing there judging me, are actually seeing that it's a hard time and they are trying to help. I, th I think that's quite nice. Mm -hmm. I don't obviously expect everyone to be like that, but it's nice for people to do that. Yeah, it certainly is. And yeah, and yes, uh, once again, coming back to understanding, compassion and being supportive too. I think that's really important. Uh, April, can you tell us a little bit, it's a bit of a generic question, but here in 2021, where the world has a bit more of an understanding of autism, uh, what is your experience as being a parent to autistic children in 2021? Um. I think it's better than what it would have been years ago, mm -hmm. but I think there's still a lot, a long way to go sort of thing, because not everyone, a lot of people still think they're just naughty kids. Um, I think there's more help than what there was years ago, and that helps, but I still think a lot of people need educated, and this is something I constantly repeat, like I think in schools, maybe like once a week, um, they need to be, um, teaching diversity, um, people with different shape sizes, problems, because I think there's, you know, there's still a lot of bullying and this is my biggest fear because you see a lot of bad things happening. Um, I really struggle with that, with my anxiety, um, especially with Colt going in school. He still, he still doesn't speak and he's like, um, last time he was around about sitting about a 10 month old, one year old level. So, I don't want people to, I'm so scared of my kids getting bullied because of this. Mm. Um, and we shouldn't have to be in this day and age, but people don't teach their kids. And I think the schools need to be doing more about that as well, just to help. They shouldn't um, be scared to, you know, go out or be themselves in front of people because of how people are. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest thing about being a parent. Mm -hmm is everything that comes with it. And I tend, I do tend to overthink a lot, but I think I have to, because I know how cruel some children can be um, in school and stuff. So that's, I think the biggest challenge I have as a parent right now is I'm so scared my kids are gonna get bullied. God oh, bless, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's very fascinating. Uh, April, you've mentioned some of the challenges that your children face uh, but also I'm sure that they also have certain unique personality traits uh, would you like to elaborate on some of that things oh. like Jaden Clayton and Colt have yeah so and what are Jayden, their interests as well okay so Jaden yeah. is he's eight but he's more like he's a, more like a teenager he's quite into Fortnite Xbox yeah. he's really really good on the Xbox so that's yeah. something I tend to let him have a bit of extra time on because he is good at that yeah. and he said he would like to be a YouTuber or a gamer when he's older now to some yeah. people they might think that's a bit silly but for Jaden I think that's quite a big thing um 
that he would go on. That's what he wants to be. And he is so good for eight years old on the Xbox. And I'm not just picking him up because I'm his mum. Yeah. He is really, really good. Um, so he's quite Xbox and he, he does like to dance. If the music's on, he'll lose himself in it and he just goes all wobbly and it, it's it's great. He's also could be very loud. He's very, very chatty. He likes to talk. Yeah. Um, Leighton, he is a way to be six. He is so sensitive. He's the little angel of them all. He's a sensitive one. He's... Yeah. Um, he gets upset very easily and I think the hard bit with Leighton is both of the other two don't always like contact so Leighton loves he's very full on loves cuddles likes to touch likes to play and the other two aren't always like that so I think he has a little bit of a difficult time with that um but he he loves dinosaurs Paw Patrol stuff like that he's very good with dinosaurs um he'll just get on with his own thing he's recently got into playing um PlayStation with his dad yeah and he's he's doing quite well at that. But he's like I said, he's a sense of he's a sweet one. Yeah. He'll kiss your hand. He's he's just lovely. And Colt Colt's still very much into like Peppa Pig and Ben and Holly because they're vibrant colours. Mm -hmm. So that's all he'll watch on TV. Um although lately he's maybe been watching small snippets of like PJ Masks and stuff. He likes Ben and Holly and that he quite likes music as well. Um he does play a lot with like figures, like um, Jaden has Fortnite figures and he likes to play with those, bending their legs and stuff. That's been his new thing lately. Or like um, musical things or like spinny light up things. They're Colt's favourite thing. And again, Jaden and Colt prefer to play by their self, where Leighton, he likes people, everyone. He's yeah. just lovely. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely beautiful. I mean, thank you for sharing that about your, uh, your children. Uh, now, uh, April, I, I know right now you have the responsibilities of caring for your children and other things too. Uh, have you been out, uh, have you set out to raise awareness and uh, other than your interactions with people, uh, how have you been raising awareness when it comes to autism? At the moment, it's just like educating people. I do share stuff and I talk about it if anyone wants to know and yeah. um like if there's like autism fundraisers and things I'll always go or donate I know it's not much but at the moment I don't have much free time to do yeah. be doing stuff so I do what I can when I can really mm -hmm. um but like I said if people ask I'm happy to sit and speak to them and let them know um I've spoke to several mums on the mum pages I have that think their kids are maybe autistic and stuff and they ask for advice and they usually end up giving me a message and I, I could give it to them and they, they're always really thankful um, it gives them a better insight because I know I know what it's like when you're first just thinking oh my kid's autistic uh, you, you don't know where to start where to look at so it's quite hard so yeah I just sort of do what I can when I can really like this interview over here which hopefully will affect many people and many people yes. will listen and have an understanding uh, so that would be wonderful uh, I, I know you've mentioned about the sensory sensitivity issues that some of your children face would you like to elaborate on that for example what would lead towards a meltdown you've touched on it say the lights the stimulation in the environment could you go into some detail there, April? Of course. So, um, like I said, the shop, there's so much going on, sounds, smells, everything, so that's quite hard. Um, obviously, the typical being told to know. Um, but it, it just depends. I suppose it wakes up if they've not had enough sleep, if they woke up maybe... I mean, we all sometimes wake up not feeling great in ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's also that to take into account. So if, like, we were to go to a park or something and it's busy, we can't go to the park that's what trouble we do have because Colt doesn't cope um Leighton loves that obviously but Jaden's also a bit cautious because there's so many people he doesn't do well with many people mm -hmm. so we can't just go and go to the park and stuff if there's kids if that would cause a meltdown in itself too many people so many faces their little heads must be spinning um I'm trying to think like I said, we do do a lot of planning if we're going out. We, even though I know Colt's maybe understanding isn't as great, we still make sure there's lots of prep there. So we say we're going there and so on, and say every five, ten minutes, we'll just be like, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing. So so they have the, they're mentally prepared 
although they're not, if that makes sense. So they know what we're doing so they can prepare themselves a little bit, even though it might not be as easy when we're there. But I think a lot of preparation, you know, making sure they know where we're going is, is a big thing for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we were to do something out of routine, that's that can cause a meltdown. They could struggle with that. Mm-hmm. Um, they like to know what, how the day is planned out. So we try to keep it the same sort of thing. That's it. Well, well, that's that's fascinating. And what you shared earlier about if there was a meltdown and your son's on the floor, you might join him there. But could you go into a bit of detail about how when there is a meltdown or some sort of demonstration of sensory sensitivity, uh, how do you deal with it? Uh, or, or not just you, how do your children deal with it, whether it's covering their ears, whether it's lying? Um, so Jada might start um, get a little bit antsy. So if we were in the shop, for instance, Jada might start getting a little bit naughty and saying, I don't want to be here. And I try to reassure them we won't be too much longer. Because if I've got the kids, I try have what I need and I try to give myself a 15 minute timeline. So it's usually around 15, 20 minutes I've got to play with. So I can't stop and look It's what I need and get out. So sometimes Jada might start touching stuff and picking at stuff and then we'll tell him not to do that. And then he'll start walking like this, shaking his head, so, you know, um, simming a lot and if it gets too much he'll just fall to the ground ears covered and he gets really upset um, so often I'll just sit on the floor with him reassure him that we can either just leave or let me pay for my stuff what we've got and we can just leave and sometimes he can get up and he's like right we're going sometimes it could take 10 15 minutes it just depends he just needs that time to bring himself back down from the overwhelmness mm-hmm. And Colt's the same, he'll cover his ears, he'll scream. Um, or another one they both do is like bite themselves or pinch or sometimes pull at their hair. Um, so I try to get them out before that part happens because it's not nice seeing your child hurt themselves because they're not hoping. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so as you might be aware, we're currently, as a team at AI for Autism, we're raising awareness to build a tool of something like a Fitbit to help people with sensory sensitivity issues, to help identify triggers, uh, whether it's something they've eaten or certain sound. Would, would a tool like this have helped uh, your children or maybe would you see it helping others? I think, yeah, I, I think something like that would mm-hmm. um, help other people and possibly my oldest Cope doesn't like anything on him but yeah I think I think something like that would be a good thing for people yeah well, well thanks for your feedback there that's it's really valuable to us we're, we're almost approaching the end of the interview April and I want to say thanks and is there a message that you would like to send out to our audience about autism and what it's like to have uh, autistic children I think the only thing I can say is it's hard. Um, I'm not going to pretend like it's not. I go to bed sometimes crying my heart out. It's a very hard journey and it's, it is filled with tears and there's a lot of fighting involved for what's right for your child, mm-hmm. but it's also very rewarding. They're mm-hmm. amazing children. Um, I, I think just seeing them smile even once a day to me, yeah. I feel like I've, you know, I keep something for the day. They're not, but I would say, like I said, it's hard, but it's very, very rewarding. Yeah. It's hard, but it's rewarding. The challenges yeah. of the parent. Are... There is a lot of challenges that, like I said, the biggest one for me is the fight and for what your child needs um, and to make sure they get that. But it's, they're, they're just lovely. Like with Colt, for me, every little cuddle or something is very, precious because he doesn't like human contact so to me those are little things to people are very very big and sentimental to me same with Jaden he doesn't like being touched so when he comes and he'll just ask for a cuddle it's it's really nice it's a great feeling that's wonderful April, thank you so much for your time today Uh, I know you mentioned something earlier about discretion having to have change your then Facebook. Uh, is there any way our audience can get in touch with you or find out more about you and your experience if they wanted to, whether it's on social media or else? Um yeah, it's just April John Thomas on Facebook. Um I can when this goes up I can 
comment and if anyone wants to contact me they can feel free to give me a message that's okay fantastic well everyone at home when you watch this you hear that so look out for the comment below we'll be posting this interview on instagram on facebook on twitter and on youtube so make sure you do get in touch with april if you have any questions april thank you so much for your time and for this fascinating thank interview thank you so much and thank you everyone at home for listening. If you liked what you saw today and you want to share your story, get in touch with us and let's put your voice out there in a world, in the world. But for now, thank you, April. And thank you, Princess. It's Princess Sol. Thank Sol, you. Eh? <laughs> She's way sleeping now. She's oh, had bless. enough. <laughs> bless. Yeah, I, I love Staffy's gorgeous smile, gorgeous smile. Yes, she's perfect. <laughs> April, our regards to your children. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. And bye for now. <laughs>